What if you had the power to rewrite your economic future, to cast off the shackles of dependence and chart a course of prosperity on your own terms? Picture this scenario. You're an adult, but you're still getting an allowance from your parents under strict conditions. You're grateful, sure, but it feels like you're wearing a bicycle helmet that's a size too small. It's secure, but it's also stifling. Now imagine deciding to swap that helmet for a hat of your own making. That's what Molly, Niger, and Burkina Faso are doing. They're stepping away from the CFA franc, a currency that's been like that overly attached parent, offering stability and connection to the euro, but at the cost of economic autonomy. They're choosing to mint a new currency, to craft a financial future that's uniquely theirs. It's like they're saying, thanks, but I'll manage my finances now. They're stepping out of the shadow of the CFA franc, a currency with roots tangled in colonial history. They're moving out of the financial house that wasn't quite their own and building one that's tailored to their needs and aspirations. But let's be clear, this is no walk in the park. It's a monumental task that's as daunting as it is exciting. It's like baking a cake for the first time without a recipe. Sure, you know you need flour, eggs, and sugar, but how much? And in what order? The stakes are high, and the recipe for success is complex. Still, this is a new dawn, a chance for these countries to craft a bespoke economic suit that snugly fits their financial contours. It's an opportunity to stimulate growth, innovation, and diversification beyond traditional sectors. It's a chance to create a monetary policy that's not a hand-me-down from a nosy neighbor, but a perfect fit for their economic landscape. This choice, this daring leap into the unknown, is a testament to their desire for economic independence. It's a bold step that could be the dinner bell for regional cooperation and economic independence across Africa. It's a thrilling chapter in the pursuit of prosperity that's truly their own. And as they set sail on this uncharted financial sea, they're not just rewriting their financial futures, they're offering a beacon of hope for others. The CFA franc, a vestige of colonial times, has offered stability, but at a significant cost. Picture this, you're an adult, but you're still receiving an allowance from your parents complete with a laundry list of rules and restrictions. That's been the experience for the nations using the CFA franc. Sure, it's provided a certain level of economic stability, tethering them to the euro and providing a safety net of sorts. But here's the rub. That safety net has come with a hefty price tag, a loss of economic independence. Imagine being unable to make major financial decisions without someone else's say-so. That's the kind of paternalistic control the CFA franc has exercised over these nations. It's as if they've been living in a house, but the title deeds are in someone else's name. They've been tenants in their own economy, so to speak. And then there's the wider impact. The CFA franc has imposed a kind of one-size-fits-all economic policy on these diverse nations. It's like trying to squeeze into a pair of shoes that are two sizes too small. It's uncomfortable, restrictive, and ultimately, it hampers your ability to move forward. This lack of economic autonomy has had far-reaching consequences. It's stymied innovation and growth, and it's kept these nations firmly rooted in traditional sectors. The potential for diversification and expansion has been severely curtailed. It's like being a bird with clipped wings unable to soar to new heights. But every cloud has a silver lining. The frustrations and limitations of the CFA franc have sparked a desire for change. A thirst for economic independence. A yearning to break free from the chains of the past and take control of their own destiny. The time has come to break free from these chains and take control of their economic destiny. This move away from the CFA franc isn't just about minting a new currency, it's about stepping into a new era of economic autonomy. It's about shaking off the shackles of the past and forging a path towards a future that's truly their own. It's about claiming their rightful place on the global economic stage. And that, my friends, is a journey worth embarking on. Crafting a new currency is akin to baking a cake for the first time without a recipe. You know you need flour, eggs, and sugar, but how much, and in what order? Similarly, forging a new monetary path involves ensuring economic stability, achieving international credibility, and establishing robust financial governance. The first ingredient, economic stability, is like the flour in our cake. It's the foundation, the bedrock. Without it, everything else crumbles. Economic stability requires careful management of inflation, fiscal responsibility, and a solid monetary policy. Next, we have international credibility, akin to the eggs binding our cake. This is about trust. Trust from international investors, trust in the stability of the new currency, and trust in the overall economic health of the country. 
It's about showing the world that these nations are reliable players on the global economic stage. Then, we have financial governance, the sugar of our cake. It's about transparency, checks and balances, and strong institutions. It's about ensuring that corruption doesn't seep in and spoil the mix. Now let's not sugarcoat it. This is no walk in the park. It's a Herculean task. But remember, the best cakes aren't made overnight. They require patience, meticulous attention to detail, and a willingness to learn from mistakes. Yet herein lies the opportunity for a bespoke economic suit tailored precisely to the needs and aspirations of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso. This could lead to policies that stimulate growth, innovation, and diversification beyond the traditional sectors. Imagine ditching the old suit that was always a bit too tight in certain places for something that fits just right. This bold step could be the dinner bell for regional cooperation and economic independence across Africa. It's a thrilling chapter in the pursuit of prosperity that's truly their own. It's a monumental task, but one that could lead to a more fitting, bespoke economic suit. And just like a well-baked cake, the fruits of this labor could be sweet indeed. Imagine ditching an old, ill-fitting suit for one that's tailored perfectly to your needs. That's the opportunity Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso have as they embark on this journey to create their own currency. This isn't just about new money, it's about new policies that stimulate growth, innovation, and diversification beyond the traditional sectors. For years, these nations have been wearing an economic suit that was designed and tailored by others. It was a suit that came with a set of rules, a suit that sometimes felt too tight in certain places, restricting their growth and limiting their potential. Now they have a chance to take the measurements themselves, to tailor a suit that fits just right, that takes into account their unique economic contours and aspirations. Imagine the potential of a monetary policy that's not one size fits all, but is custom fit for each nation. A policy that doesn't just consider the economic indicators, but also the people, the culture, the environment, the unique challenges and opportunities each of these countries possess. The creation of a new currency is an opportunity to stimulate growth by investing in sectors that have been overlooked or underutilized. It's a chance to foster innovation by creating an environment that encourages creativity and entrepreneurship. It's a chance to diversify the economy, to move beyond traditional sectors and explore new frontiers of economic development. But tailoring the future is not just about economic growth, it's also about social growth. It's about improving the quality of life for the people, reducing poverty, and creating opportunities for all. So as these nations step away from the old and embrace the new, they are not just changing their currency, they are changing their future. They are tailoring a future that fits their needs, their aspirations, and their dreams. This is the chance to create a monetary policy that snugly fits the economic contours of these nations. A policy that's not just about numbers and figures, but about people and their dreams. A policy that's not dictated by the past, but inspired by the future. A policy that's not just about economic growth, but about growth in every sense of the word. This bold step could be the dinner bell for regional cooperation and economic independence across Africa. Imagine a stone being thrown into a still pond. The splash, the initial disturbance is akin to Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso deciding to mint their own currency. Yet the ripples that ensue are much more significant. These nations, by taking this monumental step, are not only reshaping their own economic destinies, but they're also sending out ripples of inspiration to their neighbors. They're showing that it's possible to shake off the remnants of colonial apron strings to take control of their own economic futures. Like that stone rippling the pond, the impact of this decision will likely spread far beyond the borders of these three nations. It's a symbol, a precedent, a beacon of hope for other African countries who may have been contemplating their own economic sovereignty. Think about it. If your friend embarks on an epic adventure, doesn't it inspire you to consider your own journey? That's the potential ripple effect here. Africans across the continent might see this move and think, if they can do it, why can't we? It's a spark that could ignite a wave of economic independence across Africa, a wave that could carry with it the promise of prosperity, autonomy, and self-determination. Of course, this is no easy feat. It's like deciding to build your own car after years of relying on a hand-me-down bicycle. It requires hard work, resilience, and a good dose of courage. But the rewards, the potential for a bespoke economy that fits just right, are immense. This is not just about minting a new currency. 
It's about crafting a future that's truly their own. It's about ditching the old suit that never quite fit and tailoring one that does. It's about saying, thanks, but we'll manage our finances now. Just as one friend's epic journey inspires others, these nations could inspire a new wave of economic independence, a ripple effect that could change the face of Africa and indeed the world. As they set sail on this uncharted financial sea, they'll need to navigate with precision. The journey that Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso have embarked upon is not without its fair share of challenges. It is akin to venturing into a dense, unexplored forest with nothing but a compass and sheer determination. Their compass in this case is the collective wisdom of their economists, policymakers, and financial experts. The challenge ahead is to chart a course that can lead to economic stability, growth, and prosperity while avoiding the pitfalls that often accompany such ambitious ventures. This is no trivial task. It demands the creation of transparent institutions that can effectively manage the new currency. Such institutions will need to be robust, reliable, and above all, resistant to corruption. Transparency in economic governance is not just about keeping the books clean. It's about instilling confidence in the new currency, both at home and abroad. It's about creating a system that is accountable, where policy decisions are made in the best interests of the nation and its people, and not a select few. It's about creating a level playing field where innovation and enterprise can flourish, driving economic growth and prosperity. This isn't just a change in monetary policy, it's a declaration of independence, a bid for economic self-determination. As we journey through this tale of financial transformation, we're reminded that this isn't just about coins and banknotes. It's about a people's choice to take control, to steer their own ship, and to pursue prosperity on their own terms. We've delved into the historical chains that bound Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso to the CFA franc a currency rooted in a colonial past. We've seen how this currency, while providing stability and a connection to the euro, also stifled these nations' economic autonomy. It's like being a grown-up still living under the strict rules of parental allowance. We've pondered the recipe for success in creating a new currency. It's not a simple task of throwing together flour, eggs, and sugar. It's a complex process that requires a mix of economic stability, international credibility, and strong financial governance. It's like baking a cake for the first time without a recipe, but with the stakes infinitely higher. We've contemplated the future, tailored to the unique needs and ambitions of these nations. This step could lead to policies that boost growth, innovation, and diversification beyond the traditional sectors. It's like trading in an old, ill-fitting suit for one that fits just right, a monetary policy that hugs the economic contours of these countries, We've considered the ripple effect this bold move could have, potentially ringing the dinner bell for regional cooperation and economic independence across Africa. Just as one friend's epic adventure can inspire others, so too could these nations inspire their neighbors to consider their economic sovereignty. And we've charted the course ahead. It's a journey fraught with challenges, yet brimming with opportunities. As Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso set sail on this uncharted financial sea, They'll need to navigate with precision, backed by transparent institutions and strong regional alliances. The global financial landscape is shifting. The move by these nations is a signal flare, illuminating a path towards shaking off the remnants of colonial apron strings that have long dictated the pace and direction of economic growth. It's a monumental moment, not just on the economic map of Africa, but in the wider world. And so, as we reach the end of our journey, let's remember what's at stake. This isn't just about swapping an old bicycle for a self-built car. It's about crafting a future that's truly their own, about taking the wheel and driving towards a destination of their choosing. As they chart this course, they don't just rewrite their financial futures. They offer a beacon of hope for others. Remember, while the road less traveled is fraught with uncertainty, it may just lead to a destination most splendid. Thank you for joining us on this journey, and don't forget to like and subscribe.